Oh, my heat to grips work. Well, hey. I don't know how long they'll work for, but they do work. And they don't need the neutral light to be on. <laughs> Morning, folks. Why did I first decide to learn to ride? Well, for me, that was really easy. I just found it far cheaper to ride a bike than it was to um, get a car. Like most kids my age, even though my mum and dad had always had bikes, or rather had bikes and then stopped to get a car, I wanted a car, but couldn't afford one. Everything was far too expensive on it, so I looked into it and I could get a bike. So for my 18th birthday, I went out and I bought a bike. Now, what I bought is in my bike history. That's no problem. You can look at that in bike history part one. But um, I decided to buy that bike and the insurance was cheap enough and the cost of running it was far cheaper, far, far cheaper. And um, I decided that this was going to be a two year deal. Because uh, you, you, you just had, at that point, uh, it came into law that you've got to take a two part test. Not only that, that um, it wasn't a compulsory basic training, but you, on, you only held your license for two years before you had to renew it. Nowadays, um, you got your license, it's just that you have to you know, re retake your test. And um, coming up to the end of the first year, I thought, oh, I'll take part one, that won't be a problem, because it was a birthday present for me, mum and dad. Part one training part one test, part two training. And I passed and it was great. Then I continued on the same bike, uh, my Honda H100A. And then I went on to coming up towards the end of the second year and I thought oh, I'll just take it anyway. And so I went in for my part two test, which I passed. And then I could get any bike. But I just happened to go onto my dad's 250 Super Dream because that was there. And uh, that was great fun for a while, but I, I really got into biking by then. So why did I continue riding? Partly because of the cost, and partly because you, you do get so much, so much enjoyment from it. Like a lot of people that I've been watching re recently, it's really, really hard to put into words what we feel. And for instance. I tried to explain to a bloke at work the other day. You go down uh, in your car in a long twisty road, and the first thing you're thinking about after it, after it is where you're going next. Where do you need fuel? Are you warm enough? What track is on the radio? Or on your CD player or whatever. On a bike after you've gone down a long and twisty road, you think. That was enjoyable, turn around and do it again. How many people turn around and do it again? So, why do I continue to ride? Well, like I said before, it's something you can't put in, into words. It's just really, really difficult. It's great fun. It's a great feeling. Even in the cold weather, like it is today, you just enjoy the ride. It becomes monotonous and boring when you have to have to do it every single day for work or whatever. Most of us um, can't afford not to, you know, we have to take it for one reason or another. Third question, how long will I ride for? <laughs> well for me, it's a physical possibility of ending soon. I have a few illnesses uh, which cause me uh, great problems. Uh, I have a stiff neck. I can't move my, my neck properly. So it gives me limitations. I um, come into corners at particular 
angles so I can see. I stop at the easiest of junctions when other people would just go straight on, you know, straight, continue to ride because all they do is do quick left, quick right, off they go. And then this one, I have to stop and physically check, make sure everything's okay before moving off. You just have to. So that's part of life. I don't know how long I'll, I continue for, but I'll tell you I will miss it when it's gone.